Now, <laughs> I, um, this is sort of a challenge. I'd like to know, are there any amateur magicians or professionals, as a matter of fact, in the audience today? Let's see some hands. Uh, oh, we've got a few here. Oh, I'm sorry. You were that close. I got the vibrations. I didn't know where they were coming from. <laughs> okay. I'm going to tell you, you ladies and gentlemen of, of science, that I do this next demonstration just to make the magicians nuts. <laughs> because this is something that uh, they have not solved. It's not on sale. It's not in any of the catalogs or anything like that, not in the instruction books. And I've never shown anyone how to do it. But it's a very simple demonstration. And it involves some mathematics. I'm sure you'll forgive me. <clears throat> These um, that I have in my hand here are what they call the ESP cards. The circle, the plus mark, the wavy lines, the square, and the star. These were designed by a man named Zener, a psychologist in Switzerland many years ago, who made up these cards. Usually they're much smaller. These are the dis display kinds, so the whole audience can see them clearly. Um, he made these up for tests in psychology, particularly in parapsychology, to test ESP powers of predictive powers and, and uh, of reading powers of telling what people were looking at. Now, um, I have also here a, uh, a brown manila envelope, uh, oh, with a clasp on it this time, that's good, and a piece of black paper of photographic quality, which is quite opaque. And I'm going to take this whole works and I'm going to give it to someone here in the audience. Uh, uh, where is it? Well, I can give it to uh, this Starling gentleman right here, if you don't mind, would you? Okay. I want somebody sufficiently far away from me so I can't peek. Now, here's what I'd like you to do, sir. I'd like you to take the five cards and mix them. Now, I should say shuffle them, but it's very difficult with only five cards, you know. So just take them and face down, shuffle them up so they're thoroughly mixed in such a way that you and people around you, that no one will know which card is which. When you've done that, let me know. Okay, that was quick. Now, I want you to take any two of them, keeping them all face down, take any two of them and put the other three on the floor uh, underneath your chair, face down. Done that? Okay. Now, the other two you have in your hand, you must not know what they are. I want you to be sure that you don't know what they are. But here's the tricky thing. Look at me for a second. You've got the two cards. Look away and turn the two of them quickly face to face. I think I heard that, yes. Okay. Take that little package of cards you have, that pair of cards. Put them inside the piece of black paper. Just unfold it. Put them inside the piece of black paper. Okay. And take that little package and put it inside the envelope. And use, if you will, both the glue and the... And the little seal, the glue is really nasty. I tried one of those previously. But uh, glue the envelope and use the little uh, catch on it as well, if you would. Okay. You got it? Okay, so it's all sealed up now. Right. Now, make sure that when I approach your chair, I can't see the other cards that are underneath. Hold your legs in front of them or put something on top of them. Because if I were able to see what they are, then I would know what the two in the envelope were, right? Okay, now, let me have the envelope. I'll keep looking away from you. And make sure I don't fall off the stage here. Uh, there we go. Okay. Now, uh, this we'll call the front of the envelope. This we'll call the back. This is a technical thing I want to get clear from the very beginning. All right. Now, what are the odds? And this, this is the, the big question. Where's my pen? There we are. The big question right now is, what are the odds of me being able to tell what one of the cards inside the envelope is? This is the easy part. One-fifth, 20%, one in five. Okay. That's it, hmm? <laughs> <laughs> you suspect me of skullduggery? <laughs> You're right. <laughs> uh, no, I don't know this gentleman. I haven't met you before, am I correct, sir? That's correct. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> the chances of my finding out what one of the cards are, correctly that is, is one in five. What are the chances of my finding out what two of them are? Come on, this is statistics. I know you hate it, but you have to do it every now and then. What are the chances of my knowing what both cards are inside the envelope? One in 20. Okay, how did you get that? One over five times one over four? Uh-huh. What are the chances of my knowing what the two cards are without knowing in what position they are, though? Think about this for just a second. For years, I was going around giving people the wrong figures. The chances of my finding out what the two cards are by some superpower or something like that are not as easy to calculate as you might think. You might think it's one over five times one over four. But to tell you on which side of the envelope they're located, that's a different matter. I used to double it. I used to say uh, one in 20. No, it's one in 40. It's actually, what, one in 20. 
if it's on which side of the envelope they are. If I just say I've got A and B, and I don't say in what order they are, that's a different matter altogether. Funny, huh? Now this is the back of the envelope, because you can see the clasp right here, and this is the front of the envelope, very obviously. I'm going to tell you right now that I know what cards are in here. For example, and on the back of the envelope here, I have a sneaking suspicion that there we have the plus mark. And I think that on the other side of the envelope, we have the circle. That's the easy one. And just to make sure of that, I'm going to draw a circle on here, and I'm going to draw a plus mark on there. OK. Now, this is what we call the moment of truth. I'm going to open the envelope very carefully. And ooh, it's sticky. You really licked that, didn't you? Mm -hmm. <laughs> Making sure that no time did my fingers leave my hands. And uh, remember I said that on this side we had the plus, on this side we should have the circle. And let's just see how correct we are. And indeed, when I open up the piece of paper, we find that we do have... All right, want to take money on it? Let's put money on it. <laughs> Who's going to bet me? Come on, let, let's, let's get some calculations going here. <laughs> you what? You see, he was right. When I asked, what are the chances of my guessing what these cards are, he said, 100%. <laughs> that was my line that I was supposed to come up with at the end of it all, you see, <laughs> after they had done all the calculations. Yes, the chances are 100% because this is a trick. Now, wait a minute. There's another possible solution here. I took the envelope from the gentleman like this, right? And I walked across here with it. I might have just very quickly just gone in here and done a switch for an envelope that was already inside my jacket. Well, that's not true because you can see. <coughs> <laughs> How can we prove that that's not true? Look at the other three cards, of course. Let's see the other three cards, if you would, please, sir. And hold them right up above your head and show them the, ah, we got the wavy lines, we got the square, and we got the, circle, the uh, star, right? Hey, very good. Okay, now, this is another example of what they call in the trade Mentalism, it appears to be done with the mind, but it's done by sheer trickery. I have had solutions for this offered me by scientists to say, oh, there's a computer chip buried in the envelope, and there's a <laughs> scanner inside there, a little camera on the end of your finger here, and when you, oh, I've had every kind of solution offered me. It's actually very simple. You want to know how I did it? Yes. Tough. <laughs> For more of James Randi and the Educational Foundation, make sure you visit randy.org.